Hello, welcome to Nintendo Nostalgia, episode 148. I'm your host, Jacob Rush, and I'm joined by my co-host, Ryan Black, and we are back, and we're playing with power on another spooky episode today of Nintendo Nostalgia for our spooky month. It's all, it's Octo- October month, the month of Halloween, uh, and we like to try to make these themes a little bit more darker, if you know what I'm saying. Not too crazy, but... Um, Ryan, how you doing today, man? Um, good. <laughs> I haven't thought about it. <laughs> I hope you're doing good. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm doing all right. You seem pretty happy. Yeah. Today's had its ups and downs, but I'm pretty happy. Yeah, I get you. Ups and downs come and go. I get it. Thankfully, I've been blessed with it. I had a pretty good day. Uh, busy, but pretty good overall. Um, Ryan, wants to uh, kick us off again by doing our due diligence um, since we're gonna, we have been doing it at the end of the episode, so uh, it's, uh, you know, I just want to get it out there out of the way. And guys, if you haven't called our hotline yet, um, do please do because we are, um, well, we are having our third anniversary birthday coming up on Halloween night. So if you can get those in that before that the Monday of Halloween, or the week of that Halloween, which is. Uh, that's when we typically record. We love to play and listen. Um, just your thoughts, how you found the show, and um, just, just say hi. You know, ask us any questions you want to. We would love to do that for, on that special episode to us. So, um, yes, please feel free to call the hotline. Um, Ryan will spout off that hotline number here, and and uh, just a second when I stop talking. But um, what <laughs> do our due diligence, brother? I'll lead with the number. Um, you can call our hotline at three one seven nine six nine five six nine zero. And uh, you can find us on our home site at the Nintendo Village.com slash Nintendo Nostalgia on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Nintendo NOS, on our Twitter at Nintendo underscore NOS. Shoot us an email, Nintendo Nostalgia IN at gmail.com. You can find us on YouTube and on Instagram at Nintendo NOS IN. Jacob? Yeah. Got a question for you. What's up? What are we radical rexing about? Great, great segue, Ryan. Um, we, well, I don't know. Do you want to start us off? What do you, you got anything exciting on your plate as of late? Let's see. Exciting on my plate. Well, uh, my, my Vanagon that has been in the shop for a year and like three months, uh, just picked it up today, drove it home. So it is, it is in working order and I have a car again. <laughs> well, if it's been in the shop for over a year, I, hope it works again yeah it's got like one little bitty tiny issue that's gonna take some time for me to save up and get the part replaced but it's enough that it's it's not that big of a deal like to run it and to drive it and everything why was it in there so long just couldn't afford to get it it out it's an 83 diesel manual vanagon so it's a hippie bus and it's an ninja turtle van it's really hard to get parts for that thing so it's just been like waiting for the right parts to come in and find the right prices. Wow. And it's just been, yeah, it's been like well, fighting a tooth and nail. Yeah. Put in a whole new engine in it and you got it like $150 for the engine. Not bad at all. So like, I mean, you found a working engine and, and put it in there and wow. Yeah. It was, you wonder why you have journey. car problems because you're buying cars from 1983 <laughs> and not just a regular car. It's like a rare type of car well that's my wife's dream car so you know i had my dream car for a little bit and that that didn't serve me too well but you know <laughs> okay i'm ready to own a van like a a van just to cart stuff like a, around and like my old cool van minivan. yeah yeah like a grand caravan no. or something yeah absolutely i love minivans i had one <laughs> through all high school you know silver bullet so um carting around they're good speakers they and stuff really for the band you know <laughs> oh yeah heck yeah no, totally <laughs> Good times. Um, anything else besides your van? You know, games, uh, play anything? Yeah. Um, I play a little game called uh, Ukulele in the Impossible Lair. Um, mm. I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, Good. Though, unfortunately, I didn't finish the game before Overwatch came out. So I'm probably not going to finish it for a while because Overwatch is all I'm going to eat, sleep, and breathe. <laughs> uh, okay. I just take back my claps. I don't know what it is. <laughs> So yeah, Overwatch came out today. Um, I linked my Blizzard account, and I haven't gotten to play it since. 
So I am itching Perfect. to get into the game. But I'm doing this because I love this a lot more and I love you a lot more than uh, than Overwatch. So if that makes you feel any better, but not as much as ukulele. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, I wish you loved ukulele more than me right now. To be honest. <laughs> I, I'd be OK if you're like, I just can't put this game down. We're not recording. I'm like, I'm with you. I'm going to go play it, too. Um, oh, and I have another little one. Um, I just up- yeah, updated my phone today. Uh, the, the phone it pushed to my phone, and it allowed me to upgrade to the new version. And it has a dark nice. mode, and I'm really digging the dark mode on my phone. Um, and I also yeah. made my own uh, emoji or whatever, and made it look mm-hmm. like me, and it was fun. <laughs> yeah, you blew my phone up with a bunch of random pictures I saw. <laughs> I was like, "What's going on?" I thought I thought something important was happening, and then I all of a sudden I I see it, and it's like Ryan with um, hats and no hats and i was like okay <laughs> um cool man well um i got a few things i'm radical rexing about this week um i wrote a new song um uh, i i've been working on it for a couple of weeks now two or three weeks i actually actually could have finished it could have finished it last week but i played ukulele the entire week instead of doing responsible stuff like actually furthering my music and getting better at it but i was like no i want to just be feel like a kid again and just play games that's it so i did ukulele a lot last week obviously um but i finished it uh yesterday and um it it turned out really good i'm really happy with it so i'm actually looking into starting my own little uh soundcloud uh for my music and i need to create my own little website too where i can just direct people to and people can check out what i'm making so um those are the next steps i want to do with that but um i'm going to be working on a luigi's mansion type song for the month of october that's that's my next goal i've never done anything like that so i'm a little nervous i'm afraid it could be challenging i mean which i mean that's a good thing in a way you know it stretches me but at the same time i also hate getting stumped when i'm writing music too you know so we'll see uh hopefully i'll come up with something pretty good we'll 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 see but um i also uh, a couple weeks ago i I haven't mentioned this yet but um our good friend matt friend of the show he has a game coming out soon on the eShop, and he asked me to write um some new tracks for it's an older game that he's made and uh, he asked me to write a couple tracks and i got to do that for him and he likes them he liked them the first time i sent him i was actually really surprised i was like <laughs> mentally prepared to make a lot of changes for him to like not even like it at all and he's like those are great great thank you and it's like okay cool so um excited for that and matt we're gonna um get you on the show and that game gets out in the eShop, and we're gonna we're gonna advertise it and uh um uh, I I'm going to have a surreal moment when I can play a video game that I got through my switch in the eShop and it has a song that I made on it. That's going to be so mind blowing to me. Um, <laughs> one step at a time really want to become a video game composer. So, Hey, this is how you do it. One step at a time, you know, but, um, so I'm radical rexing about that. Um, I am radical rexing, obviously, mostly about ukulele in the impossible lair. Um, Ryan actually started out with kind of like oh, lukewarm responses, um, and I, I the whole time I'm like, what, what are you talking about? This is exactly like tropical freeze. I don't know why you're acting this way. And he, he's admittedly come around to it with his grumpy fa- cat face memes and he's he's liking it you know so i'm happy about that i'm really happy you're enjoying it ryan um just some yeah first off initial impressions um man ukulele in the impossible lair is it's awesome i mean it's really good the music's great o- overall the music is really good david wise grant kirkhope and a couple of um uh, platonic in-house composers um Matt Griffin was one of them, and I'm not sure. I can't think of the other guy's name. But um, it's really good, man. The music's great. The graphics are great. It feels, it runs smoothly. Um, Yeah, the only, the only, like, little annoying issue with it is when you first start the game up, it's got, like, some long load times. Um, But that's literally getting from the title screen into the game once you're in the game it moves flawlessly it doesn't take a lot of load times at all um it it, it's a great game ryan i'm really enjoying the the overall the overworld um 
it's so fun and magical. I just want to keep exploring. Like, I want to do that almost more than I actually do the platforming levels. I really like seeing what can I push the boundaries on? Where can I go? Can I get around this nook and cranny before I, I physically can't move forward anymore? Um, I, I love it. And I love that it takes place in the Hivery Towers area and Shipwreck Creek. And, like, it's, you know, the same areas that you, you only saw two areas. Um, Hivery Towers and Shipwreck Creek in the first game. And and now this is also not a direct sequel, keep in mind. So the events of ukulele, the first game, this isn't the direct exact events happening right after. Like this is there's been some time in between those games and play Tonks and go back and fill those gaps in at later times with other characters. Um but um it's uh man, it's it's really cool to see more areas outside and around Ivory Towers, and that's what this game does with the overall world. Um, and, uh, the levels are fantastic, Ryan. I mean, it, it literally is Donkey Kong Country. I mean, these guys, it's the same makers of Donkey Kong Country, the original trilogy that we grew up on. Um, they're doing it again. And, and I still stand by the first ukulele. I know it has issues, but I really loved that game and I still think it's worth picking up. However, what I'll say about this one, um, people who are on the fence get off it. Like it's, it's a great game. And if anything, it's doing better than the first one. It's not coming out of the door with some fumbles and some fixes that need to be made. It is, it's solid. It, it's come out of the gate strong and, um, it's, uh, I want to see it in the top 30 eShop and it's not there. And it, and it really bothers me because I'm like, these guys are doing a great job mm-hmm. and it really needs to sell well. Like I really would love for Nintendo to ask you Playtonic to make the next Donkey Kong country games. If they were willing, they would do an amazing job. And I bet you they'd be so excited to work with the Kongs again, if they could, you know? So who knows? But like, that's how, confident i am in them as as from what they're doing with this game from the sound to the visuals to the ideas and the concepts that you're seeing in the levels um i really would i trust them entirely to take back the kongs and make more games um and that's that's saying a lot you know from that being my favorite nintendo franchise so um yeah it's fantastic you know this is an our review episode of the game we we will do one um but uh, we are also, I think the last thing I need to touch on for Radical Rexing with it is um, <laughs> we got by our, our Nosh crew member, part-time co-host, Mr. Joshua Taylor. He did, um, he sent me over a little uh, surreal fun fact about the game. And it, uh, I... I was in shock, Ryan, when I when he sent me this. Um, <laughs> it was pretty surreal. Uh, if you look on the ukulele Wikipedia, um, according to the ukulele Wikilink, the trivia, the harmony of the rap for the ukulele rap could be a reference to the title theme from the SNES platforming video game Radical Rex. Uh, released in 1994. Since the harmony of the rap is played by Rextro 64 is who is a Trianosaurus tri- Rex, who happens to be a of the same species as the main character of Radical Rex. Well, would you freaking look at that? This little segment we have, Radical Rex, and that people don't know what you're, we're talking about. One of my own favorite video game companies has referenced them in their own games. Like, Hello, that is so cool, and I'm proud to say that like we're the only podcast in the world that probably talks about Radical Rex. <laughs> so that's awesome. I that made me so happy. I'm like, wow, what, what a perfect scenario. What are the odds? You know, it, it's so cool, so cool. Um, Josh, thanks for sharing that with us, guys. And guys, yeah, go listen to the ukulele rap if you haven't heard it yet. Um, it's funny and silly, just like the DK rap was, but. Um, yeah, that's really all I'm radical rexing about right now. I just can't put ukulele down. Um, I I love the game. I I think about it. I feel like a kid. I think about it. I I want. It's the only thing I want to play. I want to just keep pushing. I keep forcing myself to stay up late when I should go to bed, and I'm freaking tired to keep playing the game. And um, 
Ryan, it's uh, it's got secrets, it's got collectibles, it's everything Donkey Kong Country is, and and that's it's fantastic. Um, the, and, and collecting the tonics add a good spin to the game too. I would say it's probably better than in some ways from the early games of Donkey Kong Countries. Um, better than the the SNES games because there's more stuff to do and there's collectibles oh, sure. and, and and secrets and things to find, like even more so like in the levels, but also in the overworld. So like it's, I mean it's definitely the evolution of what we'd want to see in that type of game. And they did a good job with it. Really good job with it. But there are hidden secrets galore. There's secret exits. There's, there's special like hidden areas. You can find bees in places. Like it's, it's really cool. Yeah. I would argue that if this was, um, if rare would have taken on the opportunity to make a Donkey Kong country Four, that this is in lines of what it would have looked like. Um, so, uh, Again, I can't talk about it enough. It's it's so good. Um, as a matter of fact, preparing for this week's episode, I was honestly begrudgingly stopping to play ukulele just to educate my mind on what we're going to talk about today, you know? So, um, and that was hard to do. I didn't want to. I was like, I just want to keep playing ukulele, but let's do this. Uh, but so speaking of which, Ryan, the episode, the episode that we're bringing to the table today, guys, this episode... Today's episode could be a little bit shorter than, uh, especially last week's was like an hour and a half, which was, I really enjoyed our Metroid Other Room talk. I hope we did the game some justice, and I, I, I hope some people give it a shot. You know, I really, it, we, it has its flaws, and we are very open about that, but I think overall it's a fun game, and people should play it. Um, and But this week, I think it'll be a little bit of a short, shorter episode, because we're not talking about an older nostalgic game. We're not talking about um, even a, some different horror themes ryan and i this year wanted to um talk about something current um we wanted to but it's still in theme with the the spooky month we want to talk about something that you could go get your hands on pretty easily today and if you haven't played it we can suggest it uh to try it out um and that game is called little nightmares <laughs> Okay, Ryan, Little Nightmares. Um, this is a game that I'm very f- new with. I'm not, I t- Tess, I haven't played it very much. I have played it enough to dip my toes in and to really feel the atmosphere of the game. Mm-hmm. And um, that happens pretty darn quick as soon as you start. Um, but, um, you know, Ryan, Ryan has streamed the game. Ryan has a Twitter, or duh, he has a Twitter. Ryan has a Twitch that Ryan streams video games. He's the streamer, guys. If you didn't know, go follow him. Uh, Ryan, where can people find you at for your streams? And, and like, what's your name? Um, my uh, name on Twitch and Mixer is uh, Metroid Hunter 101. Oh. Beautiful. And uh, it's similar to my uh, my Twitter, which is, you know, Metroid Hunter. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it is. Uh, it's uh, a very interesting game, Ryan. And, um, you know, why don't you? I know you have more knowledge on this. You know, why don't you lead us, lead us into this? Like, okay. what is Little Nightmares and why is it deserving of this topic of if you want a spooky game to play, this is what you should play? So, uh, this game I wanted to give you a creepy survival horror esque puzzle platformer. And um, it's, it's very much plays on dark lighting and dark themes and kind of gross themes in some ways. And, and creepy Very and, and gross. not like like slasher flick, but still like kind of disturbing in, in some ways. Mm-hmm. Um, disturbing, I say, is a key, a key word here. It was uh, initially released um, Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One in uh, April of 2017. Um, it didn't come out for the Switch uh, till the uh, 2018, it was May 18th. 
So uh, we had a little bit of, of a delay, you know, but Switch wasn't quite in full swing. And they, I'm so glad that they ported this over. I was it's one of the games that I really wanted to play. Um, I just never had the time to stop and play it. Um, I want to say that I even bought the game or got some kind of figure or something. Some kind of pre-order bonus, maybe. I guess I got something for the game a while ago. And uh, I really, really like this aesthetic, um, like the the raincoat and the the odd shaped characters and creatures mm-hmm. and things. Um, but it, it's all about this this little uh, what I would think is a girl, but there's no there's real gender. Um, it the character goes by six, um, and uh, wanders around <laughs> trying to escape this. This facility, it seems like like a big like underground like boat or something, maybe a submarine. Uh, it's I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I got the impression it was underwater. And as you progress, you eventually start going above and you, you board a boat and then you eventually end up on like a cruise liner, I think, or something like that. Um, but it's just it's very. um creepy creepy game where you wander through um trying to avoid all of the kind of adult figures you're you're mm-hmm. uh diminutive diminutive in size um kind of like think uh like a thumbelina type or you know maybe fern yeah. gully or something like that no, something huh. small like that um and you're running around like um, oh what's that I said like you. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyways. Um, so like being as small as you are, uh, the smallest, like the things that we, we wouldn't think is that much of a threat would be like a huge threat. Right. Like uh, one thing that's like one thing I'm just like terrified of, like I, I think they're like the worst things that that God's ever created. And that was like leeches. And Mice. so, like, leeches are gigantic to this little character. And they, they grab on you and they suck the blood right out of you. <laughs> and it's so creepy. <laughs> yeah, um, that was the first thing how I died. I was, um... Well, it fell. I was like, what is this? So, like, the way I died was... I just walked over to it because I saw it. And I'm like, okay, what, like, what is it? You know, mm-hmm. I didn't know... Is this something I'm supposed to pick up? You know what I mean? Obviously, it quickly found out no. Because um, <laughs> if you get, like, with, like, half a centimeter to it, it wraps itself around you and kills you instantly. And um, the game's not graphic. Let's keep that in mind. Like, it's yeah. not, like, blood spurts out everywhere. It's not like that. It takes it's very... classic cues um, from old-time horror where, like, it cuts out to the part where it's, like, it leaves it up to the imagination of what happens next mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, the screen gets very dark. That's... Yeah. Yeah. And it fades out now. Um, it It's a great effect. Um, unfortunately, if you have it on a platform that takes some time to load it, um, there's a bit of a drag. Um, and so it kind of takes you out of the element a bit with the load times. Um, and that's something I'd love to see like improved over time. But uh, yeah, this the, uh, the scenes where you get caught in some sort of trap or or picked up by some character and, and things like that, it, it, it's suspenseful. Like, but it's also like you can do things to distract and to uh, hide and push things off. And it's it, like in a lot of ways, I think it borrows from the borrowers. It's like a horror borrowers in that aspect, too. Uh, we can huh. you can pick up items, move things around, shuffle things around. Um, there's these little characters that run around in it that are like, I guess gnomes or something. Yeah, I saw those. They're they're kind of weird. <laughs> you seem like I mean they haven't done anything to me yet, so I don't think they're like bad. But they're they're pretty like benign. They just run around and try to escape and stuff. Uh, there's uh-huh. it's not really clear what they do. Uh, maybe it's the equivalent to like just like fairies. You, you don't see them, but the smaller characters can see them. And okay, um, but yeah, they have these little pointy hats, and they run around, and you can help some of them. And right, and uh, it, it's really cool uh, to see. Also, your your character progresses, and that as you go on, um, the character six gets progressively like hungrier, 
And like, I like that element mm. of the fact that like six has got to eat, you know, he can't just go through this whole adventure without, without, you know, eating. So like, if you come across some food or something, like usually the cue is, uh, the character will come across food and will eat, um, like if there's bread on the floor or cheese that you've had to fight it off, fight off a mouse to eat the cheese or, or, um, gross. Uh, just like, something like that, like chase something else away from your food. Uh, but trying to stay alive because you get these hunger pains in your stomach. And um, one thing I didn't pick up on, which I read in the wiki, was I guess there's a darker version of your character, like hiding in the corner or something, whenever those hunger pains hit. I never picked up on that. Um, but maybe that was something different in the Switch version. Uh, they made a few changes in the Switch version, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> But um, okay. yeah, as you progress to the story, um, you have basically an area boss that you have to deal with or escape from in each area. Um, it's kind of a cool idea. Like the first one you come to, I believe, is a butcher. And like he's oh, like, uh, you know, I've seen that guy in trailers. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry. No, is, it, is he the butcher or is he a cook? One of the long hands. Oh, that's like the janitor. Is he a janitor? Okay. Okay. Yeah, that guy's freaking creepy. <laughs> have you I gotten have you gotten past that part with a janitor? I got to this part where there was like a bunch of sleeping babies and he like you just like it's like a dark room. It's still the long handed guy? Yeah, it was just like my first encounter with him. Like I've seen him in the background like walking, but this was like the first time like he like entered the room I was in and I was hiding under a bed and he moved on. But he hasn't like actually visibly seen me and chased me, chased me yet. Okay. Um, he very much reminds me of uh, Kimaji from uh, Spirited Away. The guy with the long arms that reaches around in the boiler room. Like mm. I get some very like Spirited Away vibes from this guy. I, I thought that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, kind of like, it's it's a cool first enemy to go up against um, because he's so get the fight with them or so jarring. Um, things happen uh, that you take care of him. You 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 stop him from chasing you. Uh, and I'm not going to spoil that because it's kind of cool oh, you what you have to do there. Him, I see. It, it's it's a little like oh what do I do here you know but once you figure it out it's kind of cool. What, what? So you're saying I want to have to die like five times before I figure it out. Uh, you might die a couple times. Ah, <laughs> oh, I hate that. I don't want to die. <laughs> the, the load times are horrendous, but I don't want to die. <laughs> period. Too. Yeah, the load times are really bad, man. Like that. There's a whole. There is a small scene at the intro part of the game um, where with the leeches, you you fall down through the floor, and there's a ton of leeches everywhere, and it's just like. Um, my problem was I was looking on a really dark screen and I was also taking care of my 10 month old son and the same time. So that was stressful. So it's hard to focus on a game that's so intense when you're watching your little one as well and make sure it doesn't fall off the couch. But, um, like I said, you go, you go and you like have center into these leeches and you die instantly and they're all over the room. So you kind of like have to just run for it because they're moving at you. Um, and you have to like make your way maneuver through them fast enough to where they don't get you. And it took me like it took me a handful of attempts. Um, mm-hmm. But that low time, like it's like a thirty second wait. I think in between, in between each. <laughs> Not load. quite that long, but maybe some. Um, but um, that okay. that goes a good, give us a good transition 30. though. Like you say, you have to run from them. Like some of the mechanics, like you, you can run and you can like slide a little bit if you like get yeah, around and start. Yeah. Um, so you can try to like dodge some enemies and things, um, but you still have like gravity working against you. So like climbing and stuff, it takes a little bit of effort. To get up on ledges yeah. and things, um, which is a nice effect. Um, I've I've many a time fallen off of like rafters and stuff and died and had to start all over. <laughs> yeah. Um, now after after you take out this long handed guy, there's you run into like a chef type character from okay. right. Yeah. And you guys are dist- disgusting. And I believe that there's a couple of them, or at least I think I remember there being like a duo working together, like their well, brother. The trailer or it looks like there's like a whole like kitchen area that you all end up going. Yeah, through yeah. Like a there, there's a cool puzzle there. with like a meat grinder, 
where you gotta like drop the sausages down and like it, it's kind of cool. Um, it, it's really creative. Um, yeah, it's kind of gross, but it's also it's 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 something I've never experienced in a video game like that. It it's charming in a creepy sort of way. <laughs> I mean, a side note, we can talk about this real quick. Yeah, some I'm glad you say. I think that's a good theme. Is that this game is gross? There's a lot of gross things. So. Uh, when we talk about like it being spooky, it's not necessarily spooky. Uh, it's not, it's not hack and slash. You know, it's mm-hmm. not rated M. Okay, Ryan and I already declared like they kind of make you um, have your imagination. Uh, you get caught with something, and then it goes dark really fast. So it's kind of like, yeah, you know, what's about to happen. Um, it's not. It's not like kitschy and silly like goosebumps and it's not quite like no, are you afraid no. of the dark either it has some of that mystery like weird bizarreness but it's it's more like what would you compare it to like in something you may have seen um i i guess maybe a twilight zone on some like creepier things but i'm trying to think of something that's just disgusting i mean <laughs> It's very depressing and very disgusting. There is, like, in the intro, there's somebody who, like, has hung themselves, and it shows that. Huh. It doesn't show them hanging themselves, but you see their legs, like, dangling from the ceiling. Yeah, and you wouldn't think anything of it, but you realize it's part of the background, and and you, if you understood what's going on, like, you're like, oh, wow, that's what that is. You know, someone would think it's just, like, a mannequin or something, because there are mannequins in the game. You see a couple of mannequins here and there. There's, I think, yeah. there was even maybe a doll scene. Um, I don't think there was a mannequin though. There was a right. There was right. a chair there. It was very well indicated that this person killed themselves. It makes you wonder, like, this. what is going on here? I'd love right, to. Read. You don't know. You just open. You just wake up. I get a lot of inside vibes. Chris White uh, must get game of the year for me. Last year, I played Inside, which is rated in for mature. Um, did you ever play Inside, Ryan? I did not know. I get a lot of vibes, similar vibes. Um, this is obviously a different game. Um, this is more of a, you can move around in 3D environments, whereas that one is more of a 2D side scroll the whole time. However, um, it feels very similar. It's very scary. It's very dark. It's very um, keep moving kind of feeling. Like you don't want to stop, um, especially if stuff chases you, mm-hmm. whereas an inside like you'll get spotted and then like you just have to keep going. If you stop, you will get killed. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's a lot of that to come in this game. Like you will be forced to be spotted. Like I don't think you're gonna be able to get through the game and not be spied by anybody. You just have this clear, safe run through. I think I'm going to have to have encounters like with the longhand man and I that forces me to get away from his grips, you know, and um so, like, that's scary. But I do get a lot of inside vibes. Um, the characters are ugly. They're not, yes like, pretty. They're meant uh, to be so. grotesque in ways. Not not graphically, but just, like, I don't know, like some Tim Burton-esque, almost. There you go. That's kind of getting closer to what this would be like. Yeah, I mean, and like, and like, like Oogie Boogie from, like, Nightmare Before Christmas would be kind of a likeness i guess and and like yeah. kind of lumpy and like stitched together almost but i don't know it's it's hard to to really i would say tim burton stuff is like perfect it's like <laughs> if he made a video game this is definitely right up that alley um the gross feelings you can get from that you know yeah. like this is more absolutely. whimsical but this and this is more like horror theme but still like it's 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 a unique blend um sure and have you gotten there, there's some parts that are really, really like creepy in that the environments are strange. Like, have you gotten the room with all the shoes? I have not. OK, you are going to like, like to yourself, you might like it, it's, it's interesting. Like you just drop down <laughs> to this room. that's like nothing but shoes. <laughs> and like you're like wading through the shoes. <laughs> it's like it's creepy. I think I saw you play this in your on your Twitch stream when okay. you were streaming it. So once. you saw what was going on in there? <laughs> like something chases you in the shoes, right? Yeah. And you gotta like get up on platform. Oh yeah, I'm gonna hate that. It's no, that's so like, creepy. It, that's like getting chased by a giant shark or something. Yeah, it's like, you know, is it clanker? No, not clanker. Uh what's the snacker? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, snacker. Like snacker. It's like that, but like in a horror <laughs> theme. <laughs> in shoes, and you can't actually see it. You just see no, the shoes. Yeah, move. you see the shoes move and it's like ah. Oh. <laughs> Did you ever get caught by it? Um, 
I think I did once on purpose because I wanted to see what happened. Okay. Maybe on the stream, maybe I did get caught at one point in time. I want to say that there was... There's another similar thing that involves water, I believe. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Makes me feel even better. <laughs> You're going to love that. But yeah, oh the game's gosh. really, really charming. Um, There's a lot of shocking points to it. Like, not necessarily, like graphics of course but like i didn't see the story turning that way or i didn't see this character like what is this overall thing. story like i said you just don't know that's Basically, how i, it's just I feel escape like inside your vibes. confinement and get to the surface you know get 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 to the human world to light you know get out and along your way like you're being like hunted so they're trying to stop you from going out it's kind of like they found out you escaped your cell and they're like, we got to get you back. Yeah. You little prisoner. In a way, but they don't care if you get back or not. I mean, earlier ones do, but other than others don't. Like, there's a moment, again, like, a very spirited away element in this. I, I see some likenesses where um, there's, uh, do you remember No Face in Spirited Away? Yeah. Um, where he, like, turns to the monster and just, like, climbs up on the table and chases after you trying to, you know, catch up uh -huh. to Sen. There, there's a scene that's very similar to that. Um, and you have to, like, get away from this guy. And, like, as you play, like, you start to get really disgusted in humanity. Like, humans are gross and just greedy and disgusting, you know? Like, especially, like, like you're on a cruise ship and you see them just, like, eating all of this food with, like, little to no regard for anyone around them. Uh huh. And it's just like this is so gross. And of course, they're all like obese. <laughs> and oh yeah, it's, they're disgusting. Characters and it's kind of like sure. a comment on humanity. And then you see like how they're treating six and the other like things around, and you're just like, this is really sad, you know? Yeah. Um, and you you kind of connect with six and feel like sorry for six. Um, and that's where the shock factor like kicks in too. It's really really cool. Um, well, yeah, because she's starving. Yeah, like, she has this hunger pain. You know. She has to, like, fight for her own food, you know? And then you got all these pigs mounting down <laughs> on everything. Um, and it's interesting, like... And you where know a good the... comparison to this game? What's that? Um, sorry to interrupt, but, yeah, yeah, go but for it. A, good, a good tone. I was thinking um, Invader Zim is actually a, a good feeling. The, the cartoon. You know how, like, all the characters... Like, it's just a really gross cartoon. Yeah, they're kind of weird and gross and creepy, like... There is actually that's a really good comparison. Like the the final like character you have to deal with, um, mm -hmm. kind of reminds me like the mysterious like slithery, um, teacher like teacher yeah <laughs> yeah like like what yeah. is she like you get that kind of vibe. <laughs> Interesting, yeah that 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 I love Invader Zim because I got nostalgia for it. But every time I watch it, I'm like, man, this is like. The people in there are, are made to be really stupid and ugly and, <laughs> and so gross. Why these They're just gross. <laughs> yeah, very gross. Um, but anyways, so, sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> sorry, it made me think of the boil. <laughs> oh, yeah, again, gross. <laughs> yeah. Talk about gross. <laughs> um, but the environments are really well done. Um, it, it's a very like industrial, like, sh like ship, like old time. Yeah. Like metal chains and everything feel. Um, and again, it, it's, it's quite a juxtaposition to get to the point where you get to this like lavish, like cruise ship setting as you get through to the end. That's very dark. Not dark. That's ve it's a very big twist because it starts out so grime and gross. But instead of the environment being gross, it's the humans that are gross. Right. And as you go along, and it's it's cool. It's a really cool element to it. Um, so, um, so obviously, you know, we're talking about the tone a lot and this the creepiness of it. Why this would be a good game to get around this month and probably in general. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about like? Um, uh, just the gameplay in general like why is it a fun game to play it's not just is it just sneaking around is it um you what, are what do you do? There, there's a physics base to it so like you can swing from chains like there's a part where you have to like 
jump on a piano and and like go with the swinging to get away from a guy that's chasing you. Um, there's like ropes and stuff you can like drop down. Um, of course, there's swimming mechanics, running, sliding. Um, there is some some attacking, but more of a survival type. Like I'm going to do this to survive and not get caught. And there's not really like a combat system necessarily. Um, but like, mm. even like, like you, you do take down like a final boss at the end. And yeah, so okay. you have to do some things, uh, to take it down. And, and I would, I would say that it's not difficult to take down the final boss, but man, is it, it's suspenseful. <laughs> Interesting. Um, well, so did you beat the game? You beat it on your streams? Um, I, I don't think I beat it while streaming. Maybe I don't remember actually now it's been a while, um, but uh, I I just beat the main game. Um, this game's right, been out for a while, so they, they put like two or three more expansions to it. Uh, just some extra Whoa. story, like you play as like a boy. Um, one yeah, thing of note is at the start. in the uh, original version with the expansion, they called him the uh, Runaway Boy or the Runaway Kid. And in Nintendo, they edited it out and just said the kid. So they took out Runaway, which I thought was strange. But that's a message. I don't know if they just want to say, like. Don't run away. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just it's an odd choice there. I mean, Nintendo's always been strict in the past, but lately I feel like they've been kind of like, yeah, put that on Switch, whatever. I don't know. And one thing that I saw in in the game because I didn't notice there was this dark character in the corner when she had the hunger pangs or when yeah, they had the I'm hunger pangs. For that next time you say you I thought she was going to, I'm going to look for that the next time I, I encounter. I never saw it. So when I got to the end, like it was more shocking to me than anything to see like a different like change. It was, it was weird. Like I never saw this like creature or whatever that was going on. It's like, it's like uh, an Undertale if, um, yeah, you know, Chero is right there yeah. staring at you the whole time. Very, very similar. Like, yes, that's exactly like the idea right. behind it, like a dark side or something. Or um, what? what we, we, and Celeste, you know, and Celeste, how you have a dark. Yeah, a yeah, battle in or what have you. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't remember seeing that. And so, like, when I got to the end, like, I felt really shocked and rewarded because that wasn't there. And so like, I, I, I'm glad that I wasn't perceptive if that was in the switch version. And if it wasn't like, cool, you know, uh, huh. I just, you know, I had a different experience than most people, I guess. When I, when, when six first got hungry, uh, I thought actually she was like about to puke her guts out. That's yeah. what I thought it was. I, I thought it was, she's going to hurl here. Cause she's on your, you feel, you know, you're on like a boat. So I'm like, she gets weaker oh, and weaker man. as you go along. Like you hit these like, hunger points and like she can barely move like she's like, sauntering along like barely able to like stand up like yeah. it's weaker and weaker it's kind of crazy she um someone like throws you some bread through like the fence someone like hears you yeah and they stand up and they like throw it in there whoever's in there and and you eat it and then you're back to putting on some strength but Crazy, and it, it you know I feel like there are obviously there's some dark tones because six is a kid, so everything that's happening to six is you know uh, in America especially you know children are sacred, and it's like you don't want to see bad things happen to children, and it's crazy to think about some of the things that goes on in this game. Again, it's rated T, um, it's not rated M, but it's um, again disturbing. Disturbing and gross are things that you come across with this game, so. Um, Ryan, you know, I guess overall, I mean, since you've played it, you know, tell people why they need to get this game. Um, and what, what do you, I know this is one like a review review, but like, what do you, <laughs> what did it rate on your scale of 10? You know, just so people can have confidence if they want to buy this game or not. This is an amazing horror game. It really is. Like, it's not, it's got themes that are like shocking, but it's not gross and gory and m-rated necessarily is it what is the rating on this game i don't even think i know um but it i loved that it, it's one of those ones you want to play in the dark and experience with other people too yeah i know 
one. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun and like play it like around Halloween time and just really get into the mood. Um, it's okay, definitely right good for that. It is good for that time of year. Um, I don't know. I'm not a big horror person, but experiencing horror in games is, is, is kind of a newer thing for me. Like closest thing was Resident Evil 4, probably um, with the chainsaw guy. You know? <laughs> and oh, geez. and uh, I played through it on Wii primarily because uh, I love the pointer controls. Um, but it, like I digress, you know, this game it's got the mu- basic controls, but yeah, the music is um, it's very atmospheric. It's yes, not very like medley filled or anything no. like that. Um, it's got a nine out of ten rating on Steam. Um, so like it reviewed well. It was re- it reviewed very well, according to this. Um, so let's see. You you haven't had very much time to play this. So what was no. what, what are your like? Initial impressions, like, did you enjoy what you've played or was it just other than the load times, like subtract the load times from the experience? Like, have you enjoyed what you, you've had to do so far with the puzzles and, and things? Um, Yeah, you know, it's been definitely an interesting take. You know, I definitely got the feeling of the creepiness. I definitely got the the harsh, dark tones. Um, And I had my first, you know, little spook moment when that guy busted in the room on me. Um. I I think uh, from – and, you know, maybe I'd have more patience if I didn't have a little one running around me when I was originally playing it. But um, I don't – I definitely hated the fact that, like, if I'm really stuck on a part um, and it takes me a while to figure out you die, and then it takes too long to reboot back up into it. That's really discouraging, and that's really, like, gosh, dang it. Okay, um, it – it, it, it encourages me to want to just put the game away and be like, okay, yeah, screw this game. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, overall though, like, I don't know. I'm just waiting in my heart. It just, I, I can feel it in my heart. Like I'm just waiting for like the scare moment where, where you just like lose your crap and you're like, Oh my gosh. Okay. I got to get out of here. <laughs> or like, look out, you know, like I keep expecting every time I go into a new room or if they like get a hint, to, like to go check out this thing over here, I, I get this feeling of like, as soon as I turn around to go back out of that area, then like, boom, there's the long armed man. And he's like coming right at me. And I'm just like, I'm terrified. And like that, I can feel it. I feel like it's around every corner in this game. So you never know what's going to happen. So, which that's probably what they wanted to go for, you know, and that, that's a good thing, you know? So, um, if you love somebody who likes to be scared, um, and who likes to have suspense and your heart beats when you move through stuff and you're trying to be very careful, um, you know, this game is definitely for you. It's, uh, you know, it's not a bad game from what I've played. It's just, I need to spend more time with it where I can focus on it myself, you know? And Um, it's, it doesn't help that you're obsessed with ukulele right now. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I really wanted to get back to ukulele when I was playing it. But Um, it definitely like keep playing it. Um, It's, it's a good story. And it's almost like it won indie game of the year at 20 at Gamescom in 2016. I think in yeah, game of the year. It, it deserves it. I Indie honestly award. think I think that, and I like that they're making a sequel. Um, yeah, and I'm. I need to sit down and play the other DLC parts, um, but it's really cool to to know that they're continuing the series, and I hope that it doesn't do like the sequels do, where it becomes more action oriented and less creepy and scary. Um, I hope that they keep that that same spirit of this initial game. <laughs> Because it was so well crafted, it, they did such a good job on it, and and it it stands out in its genre. Well, our good friend of the show, Michael or Michael James Michael uh, Lejowski, um, he uh, loves this game. And it, he had it on his Xbox, and he said that um, it was his game of the year, the year it came out. So it is. Um, a big deal i mean he liked it it was his game of the year so i mean that says something right yeah something good (laughs) you know what what i just it just popped in my head like what the the humans remind me of um do you ever see box trolls yeah well i never saw it but i know what it is so the uh the guy at the very uh, the bad guy at the end um 
has a bit of a transformation, if you will. And uh, the the look that he has there, like when he's in the condition that he's in, very much reminds me of the of the characters, the, the human characters in the game, like very huh. kind of like oddly like like chubby, but like kind of poking out in weird places and yeah, and grimy and yeah, that's kind of that that feel. <laughs> It's rated teen officially, by okay. the way. I found yeah. It. So yeah, it's got got uh. some like some elements in it that it'll make you think like, well, I don't know if necessarily you want to play this around kids because they're probably not going to pick up on the guy hanging from the rafters, you know, just the no. feet dangling down. Um, but I think at the same they time, would definitely get the feeling that this is like a spooky, scary tone. Though, yeah, yeah. Dark. You don't want to get caught by the the boogeyman. If oh you will. no, you would give them little nightmares for real. <laughs> um, Yes. Uh, so, you know, uh, I got it for $10. It's on sale right now on the eShop. So if people want to get it, uh, you know, go get it right now. It's really, really cheap. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good game for a cheap price. And I think that you should give that a, a look if you want to. So, um, but yeah, Ryan, you know, thanks for the knowledge on this episode. Again, I know I'm not much help here because I haven't played as nearly as much as you, but um, it's definitely something I do intend to finish. Um, I, um, I'm i not in any rush to finish at the moment, but it's something I definitely do intend to finish because I do think it's a very interesting story, and I, I want to see how this unfolds. Mm-hmm. So, um, But cool, man. Well, uh, that's it for this, this uh, week's episode, so I think we should... Um, just say our goodbyes, not our due diligence. But we'll be back next week, everybody, for another fun episode of Spooky Central. Uh, any final thoughts here before we close out, Ryan? Uh, try the game out. It's pretty awesome. And, uh, well, that brings us to the end of the ep- episode. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed listening, and we will see you next week. Later, Preston. Bye.